caring which one. Uh, but they go with silencer. Okay. Okay. Well, you deal with getting sealed and uh, completely controlled. You grab yourself a silencer. That's the way they're going to do it. And it's going to be a core Skywrath mage in this game. So the Death Prophet, Void, as well as Skywrath will be the cause. Uh, Alright, we're going to get ourselves inside the game. I, I also have to tweet out something very, very quickly. As it appears, I have a... Uh, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll wait till the end of the game to reveal the full roster. Uh, but I've uh, just been given the full roster of uh, of Team Tinker. Ten seconds remaining. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll reveal that one. I'll reveal that one at the conclusion of this game. All right, into the game we go. So TBG, let's watch their lanes nice and closely. Hey, awesome. battle. Didn't modify that either. Oh yeah, there we go. Smooth, smooth and silky. All right. So, sneaking, Brax faces Void, everyone's coming top, and this is rightly so. They need to make sure there's no warding basically past this line. Uh, if the warding comes up past this line, they'll see where the supports are, and RBUS can find themselves in a bit of a sticky situation. Uh, and what they are going to be doing here, TBG, is running a support Venomancer, as well as a support Undying, even though he does have this nice little ring of protection early on. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a core Pugna. We have a core silencer solo mid, and that leaves Panda as the bottom lane brewmaster. Interesting combinations when you look at them, especially considering this top lane doesn't house a single battle. stun. Not one, like, not, not even a mini stun exists for this lineup. They have a lot of slow, they have a lot of control. Unfortunately for them too, what they level up first is the Venomous Gale. Now Venomous Gale is a bit of a, is like a, is a double edge. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Because if, if you level up the Gale early on, you throw it out, it's like, okay, we get the slow, that's brilliant. But that's all you get. And it really comes with a big negative side effect. And that's the potential for denial. And when you're running an aggro trial lane, you really can't have, you can't have heroes getting denied. You, you need to be on top of it. Like, you need to make sure every single last it goes your way. So, obviously when you got burst damage from Pugner in the later levels, it's not going to be as much of a problem, but it's just that level one gank uh, that comes. I realize too, we've kind of like overlapped our overlays. Whoops, let me get rid of that one. All right. So the top lane defense, 1437 may be considering a shallow grave as well. Uh -huh. So Korok runs a safe lane Skywrath, so Snaking takes in that Death Prophet towards the mid. And then Brax gets the off lane Brewmaster up against him. Void on Brew. So Millie versus Millie, it's kind of like we just moved that middle lane over. And this lane is just weird. Uh, the Sniper going up against the Death Prophet. It's definitely not a hero combination we normally see. And I'm interested to see who's really going to come out on top of this one too. Like, in the early stages of the game, like it can go either way. Like, Snaking is going to make sure he's got enough mana that he can keep on spamming out his Crypt Swarm, uh, because he's going to get cursed or just, just, just annoyed by Quilly. Because you, you'll, he'll try and bait out every single ability he possibly can and force Death Prophet to use abilities before he really wants to. Because he doesn't want to force out the lane like this. Like attacking into the creep wave, like just pushes the creep wave underneath the tier one tower of the radiant side, which works out nicely for them. And Kuli dropping so low. Maybe this is the first timing now. Yep, Diamond a little bit too far up and has no point, uh, no decay stolen. And that's going to be a double kill right there. So I wasn't quite sure exactly how this off lane was really meant to function. You got Sky Wrath Mage, who's one of the greatest controlling heroes in the game. But then you give bonus damage from Chilling Touch, as well as technically a secondary slow and lifeline from the Dazzle. You put all these things together, and an aggro tri is really not going to work unless you have a high amount of control. And the Undying doesn't have that. Like, the Undying has to have Decay, but when, when uh, Diamond went down just then, she didn't have any Decay, like, no Decay stolen. Like, no, no Strength stolen, I should say. Decay is the ability, Strength is what she steals. 
which means there was no buff up to the Undying at all. Needs to spam by that and really keep the Sky Wrath Mage like fragile. That's going to be the goal right now. We're already seeing Navi US. It's a semi rotation coming towards that middle lane, but no one that's actually going to do anything though. Dark light. And they try and have a crack at Korok. Well, they've used the Gale, but okay, you Ooh, up too far, up too far. Poison touch. I think he cuts his shot went over to the Pugger. That wasn't the plan. That was meant to hit the Venomancer. Now the Chilling Touch bonus damage is there, so they can get rid of the Pugna Ward at least. And if that concussive shot connected on the, over on the Venomancer, he'll be dead right now. Like, there would be no question in my mind about it. He will be dead right now. And even if they are aggressive Observer Ward, I say aggressive, it's halfway up the lane. It's just so they know when they fall back. The second the hero goes this direction. If Navi US are, are aware of the movement of these supports, they can always be prepared. Especially 1437, he's the man tasked with keeping this lane alive. While well, Korok gets more and more fun. He's going to pick up Arcane Boots probably shortly too. And with the Arcane Boots, he's just going to nuke the crap out of everybody. And not just him, the rest of his team. You give Dazzle as well as Ancient Apparition never-ending mana. Well, no, no, obviously not never-ending. It's not as though we're at the Fountain of Life right now. Sneaky. It's a rough one. Oh, wow. Really? Really? Can he? Oh, yo, yo, dude, dude. Regeneration rune. <laughs> oh, if he actually triggers this now and uh, Sansa is able to to stop it. Okay, this could be a little bit of trouble. While top lane is definitely being initiated on, I'm going to keep with Snakey for the moment. He'll survive. Up to top lane we go. One, four, three, seven. He's going to take a fall. Getting that tombstone down, down the dazzle on the sidelines. No level, no point up in Shallow Grave. But they may at least get one kill up on this top lane, but it's not the one they're searching for. I would say they were searching for Korok, but at the same time, Korok, even if he dies, it's not going to matter as much. Every hero on this top lane, I'm not going to say is as important as each other, but they don't really fall behind at all. Like 1437 as well as Falked already have a lot of levels on, on this top lane. Hitting the level 6 for the Ancient Apparition is obviously important, not as much for 1437. But these two guys here, Fogged and Korok, they're the two most important heroes hit level 6. 1437 just needs uh, someone who has arcane boots on this top. And you're going to see it with this last hit now. Actually, whoops. <laughs> you're going to see it with this last hit now. There we go. Arcane boots is up and running. So, becomes a lot more of a spam fest now up on the top lane. Meanwhile, on off lane, I was talking about this as well. You, you think about the pushing timing of a Pugna, you're not finding early burst levels over on this Pugna, so it's only two points up in, in the Nether Blast, so forcing out towers really doesn't hurt, it, hurt anything. Um, of course, sneaking, however, he can. And he also does something which is very, very uncharacteristic uh, for a Death Prophet, and that's the fact he's leveled Exorcism at level 6. Most Death Prophets we've been looking at just go uh, points up in Witchcraft until until you get four points up in Witchcraft, you don't even really consider using your ultimate. So you just max out uh, Witchcraft as well as Crypt Swamp, and then at level 9 you'll go into uh, your Exorcism. Maybe level 10, uh, depending if you really need a level of Silence. But he's done, done a lot, large amount of harassment damage towards the Midtown, so it's completely understandable why he's doing it. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's an unusual, unusual decision, but the right one. Maybe even uh, to the point he could have forced out a rotation. Ha! Ah, fogged! You're dead. Uh, the Chroma 5, Blast, nice. Decay, nice. One, two, nice. three, nice. Nine, nine, two, maybe he's not dead. They can turn this one now. Korok, he's got the seal going off, and with Chilling Touch bonus damage, Brax, Chrono's on three. Oh, this is not nice. Undying's gonna go down. The puzzle, he focuses him as well, because the far one, the furthest one away, and then it's the Venomancer. Great time for Brax to TP himself up. And to become part of the engagement, a 3 for 0 engagement on the top lane to Navi US. Looking nice and strong. <laughs> Zap! <laughs> oh, I also just realized, I apologize too, uh, it appears uh, Capitalist never changed back what game we were playing. <laughs> I'll modify that now. <laughs> All right, we're not playing. We're not playing Transistor anymore. Uh, you might have to refresh your pages for it. I might have to restart the live stream at some point for it too, but hopefully not. All right. So the push coming on the top lane. Concussive shot to the partner with the orb damage right behind it. 
They can't force out the tower, though. This is the real downside about this this uh, defensive tri lane. It's tower sniping, so they get a kill. And not much more is going to happen beyond that. But you're seeing Snaking. He knows what he can do. He's got a catapult behind him. He'll trigger Rexism, and they'll take a tier 1 tower anyway. And there is nothing the Silencer can do to stop this. He's not a counter-push kind of guy. Radiant Plus, way too low. And the Gale off target. Korok, he might even decide to turn on this one right now. Uh, not enough damage. Not enough control either. Because <laughs> we do still have a... Uh, I want to say zero stun line up on Silencer. He was committing Snaking! <laughs> Well, you, no one taking up the tower. You didn't have to take up the tower at that last point. The Sansa will get the kill on the Death Prophet, but Death Prophet got it first, so she gets the levels and the boss the tier 1 tower. But actually killed off by the Dire Side, so didn't even get the last last hit gold for that. Boy, Chrono's about to come off cooldown. This Brewmaster... Okay. Well, let's actually think about what this Brewmaster is really meant to do. There's a lot of controls coming out from Navi US. So what is he meant to do when he jumps in? He blinks in, he can get instantly sealed. So all this money which has been saved up right now by Panda, also I find it amusing that his name is Panda playing Brewmaster, uh, all that money could count for nothing. Blink in, instantly sealed. Blinked in, Chrono. Obviously Chrono will take a little bit longer to trigger. But potentially that's what's there. And yes, thanks very much to the subs who are, who are letting me know. And, uh, well, hello, Combo. As I'm looking over towards the chat. So, Chrono into Skywrath Mage Ultimate. That's <laughs> it's the combo with TI. You know, there's two that war goes down. That's a level one play quad. You, you, it's just, it's so, oh, wait, what? It can actually soak up two hits? Ah, oh, it's level two now, that's fine. When I say a level one play quad can't soak up two hits from a tower. But this just starts feeding over. I can, actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's experiment tank gold coming out from play quads. Definitely gold, of course. Silencer now gets hunted down as well as Gyro. <laughs> Man, you seal up a Silencer, he can't really do anything. The Gal Gal 1 for 3 7, and now your TP's coming in as well. And this is going to be Boy causing a big, big problem. He's going to leap into the corner. He has no corner, of course, he uses the bottom lane. But he's going for the Venomance. So Leave for a time block. Finally is able to pick one up. Needs one last hit, and there it goes. A death and he got Pugner as well as Brewmaster backing up. This is Brewmaster forced to rotate before he's really ready. And snaking with a DD rune, uh, he's gonna get it with just one attack at a Crypt Swarm. And he knew how much he could push just then. Level 4 Crypt Swarm as well as a DD rune, traveling into a partner who's got so little life points. And now they go straight into pushing the advantage. Exism is up, and they can four-man top lane. Uh, Curse the Silent being on a melee creep, probably not the most intentional thing they ever did. Uh, but now they turn themselves around. They still no global silence. It's level 8 silencer. Radiant 4 is going to connect as well. Diamond will die right now. Bragg jumps in, even just to slow it down. But Panda, taking way too much damage, will finally go for the split. Waited as long as he possibly could. Now, how much collateral damage can they inflict on the Navi US? We go more curses over on Snaking. Heal should die right now. Navi US is no, not that matter. Maybe with the heal, Snaking can survive this one. Leap up. Nope, he will explode. The Brew Master is able to get the kill. That was really unfortunate for the Dazzle. He was only short by maybe 10, 20 mana. But he used his, he tried to wait as long as he possibly could there, 1, 4, 3, 7, so then he could shallow grave onto the crop. But unfortunately, he just, uh, yeah, triggered the stick charges, needed a couple more abilities to actually be spent before he had enough charges to really battle it. And because of that, he is unable to save his teammate with the Shallow Grave. Just tried to go for the heal and delay it. And that was almost enough, but he needed the Shallow Grave. And... Oh, Venomancer walks into it too. Okay, to get the kill on Korok, maybe it's worth it. But when Bragg's returns, he's got Chrono and Bubble. He'll leap himself up, and he can look over towards... Okay, Panda or Undying. <laughs> Chrono is over on the Undying, and then runs himself down. Panda does have his Blink now. And there's no time walk available for Bryce gets rid of the ward to start Dice, with. But the stick charge actually would have had enough for it. Uh, the Undying also power. <laughs> killed off by that one Radiant melee creep. But TBG still at least get themselves a tower. Well, that's nice for them. With RK boost as well as a Blink Dagger over on the Brewmaster. See what he had to do. Wait out the entire team fight before he can battle. I still can't believe there's no Global Silence. I really can't believe he hasn't leveled up Global Silence. Now, Yule Scepter sends up in the air, brings him down, concussive bolts, as well as one more Crypt Swarm. He's actually still Silence for the moment. 
Nice. Right click damage is enough to get the kill. A global silence is like one of the most important things he could have to stop a Void Corona, to stop a Skywrath Mage. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. He went a four. Yeah, okay, now he's got it. Level nine, but diamond. Yeah, they've lost so much momentum already. The T1 tower will drop on the bottom lane. That's all T1 Radiance towers gone. Tower all for 16. Uh, for everyone out there who's probably been like kind of looking at uh, net worth and things like that, I've been avoiding it for a very good reason, but I really can't avoid it anymore. And this is the reason why. Top three belong to Army. You have no, no surprises there. Uh, this game is just fully controlled by them. They are pushing so far ahead. Their experience is almost 10,000. Their goal is over 10,000. Everything they want is there, including little Doomlings Courier, Golden Doomling Courier as well. They're bathing in the money that Navi seems to provide them. Eat. One, four, three, seven, and fogged. Pushing up against the wall of wards is never going to work, but they don't really care about this. Right now, it's a couple pickoffs. That's all they're really searching for, and in 47 seconds, they're going to push down another tower. That's that's the goal right now. They can keep the pressure on on, the, on multiple lanes. Brax is doing it on the top lane. He knows what the mask can manage. He can basically solo almost any hero. And when Kurok's behind him, he can actually kill any hero without any question mark being put on it, including the Brewmaster. Now, five man. Okay, the, this is this kind of feels like uh, TBD just going. All right, all right. Boss the walls. Well, for the people that have those, obviously Diamond doesn't. Uh, but push down the middle lane. That's that's the goal. It's five men go to this. Unfortunately, it could be the very end fight for them because I'm looking at a void as well as a Skywrath mage looking to flank them. So this five man Dota is probably going to get revealed pretty shortly. And now Brax, where's the opening? Leaves himself in double Chrono. He got Pugna. He got Undying. The Global Silence does come out, but what's it really going to be stopping here? It's a double kill already coming in for Brax. The Yule Center will send him up in the end. Venomous or she coded up quite nicely on the ultimate, but. They all are going to drop here, Science. and this is the problem. They can't five men don't push this one. They need to force a tower when Navi US were out of position. Unfortunately for them, Navi US was never going to get out of position. They were able to force out multiple lanes because of the, of the hero massive advantage they already have. So it only took one hero to be in each of the lanes to win that. And now Brax is even looking to pick up his Maelstrom. With the tower going down, if he gets the last hit, he'll have some money for it. You see, yeah, Radiant middle tower has so fallen. Maelstrom will now fly out. Radiant's top tower With Maelstrom, they attack. may consider holding off on pushing high ground because they also have no Chrono. <laughs> the weave that hits on the partner as well as the Brewmaster. Brewmaster has no split as well, and that's probably... I don't think that even counted into Navi's calculations. Uh, this should be Navi also looking at Roshan shortly. Like, the Maelstrom's coming out, but they should still be looking to have the Aegis Immortal push the advantage beyond contention. They could take tier 2 towers, but just waiting out the 50, 55 seconds with a Roshan kill, that's all they really require. Now, Korok, where are you going, Korok? He's just going back to heal. Alright. Could have fl flown out some items for him there. I love, too, the fact that he went for the Rod of Aoi. As his first item. A smoke gang time. I'm interested to see if this kill is possible. Just think about who they can actually try and kill. Ancient Apparition and Skywrath are uh, probably the easiest kills they can get on the map if they're isolated. But you'll need to use Global Silence. You, you must use Global Silence. And now Void! Oh, hey! Oh, the pain! Jumps in, throws the ult, the Skywrath with it. May begin. And this is why you understand why this combo was played Radiant time and time again as TI4. Ah, oh, Sneaky's actually committing his ultimate to this. I suppose if they want it quick, that's one way to do it. Smoke gank is coming out from TBG, so if we get the bottom tower, smoke's gonna break. So they're over on the tree line. There's no vision Radiant coming out from Navi US. Brewmaster blinked himself up. Where's your seal, Korok? Where's your seal? There it is. He waited almost the maximum duration time. Or Brewmaster would have gone for the split. And now with a drain off racks, he has to back himself up. Shallow Grave will protect him, but with both. Oh, okay, with Weave going out over on TBG, they're losing the heroes too quickly. That orb attack will be enough damage for sneaking on the front lines. You will step it up over on to the Undying. Diamond at least managed to get two steals in day, uh, from the Decay. But there's just no more to be had. 30 life points over on this Faceless Void. He'll be able to get a lot of that back just by hitting the creep wave from the bottom. 
An exorcism while it was used in the bottom tower, so they won't have to force high ground just yet. But now the US are in a very commanding position. Brax is <laughs> he's coming back towards the mid too. He needs to group up for the mana. Like, need to trigger, I, I think Kurok is actually waiting for him to come in. Actually, okay, they say screw it. Brimaster could try and clap the void in the bottom lane, but he's already up to half of his life points, and if he backtracks the initial clap, then they've they've already lost the kill and they've probably overcommitted themselves. Void also now has Chrono back off cooldown. And snaking in 25 seconds will have the same. And what's coming out? We've got a second rod of Aoi coming out. This one's going to be over on the uh, crop. They just start kiting out TBG. Which is fair enough considering they are running... Well, I'm not going to say the fastest heroes in the game, but it's no blink heroes in the game. No natural, like, ability blink heroes. You know, the one from the Brewmaster, but Brewmaster blinks in. You slow him down once with concussive shot, then you got two rods of Aoi. That's all you really need. Oh. This will just come down in one last fight. Right, maybe they can find it. Korok? No. Trono actually hit on three. The Brewmaster for the back lines, but that is just... Well, uh, this is TVG just having a little bit of fun. The second they thought they could have a crack at Korok, it was, uh, yeah, too late. Blink, clap, maybe one last kill, but then Shallow Grave, they're going to kill up the fire, really, which means all the damage is lost, but the game is lost. The game was lost from the very, very start. So, uh, yeah, GG, GG. Wrapping up the game, Navi US will take the victory and we'll be having ourselves a short break. We have 25 minutes until the schedule starting time of the next round. Uh, we might be starting a little bit sooner than that. As far as the games we're co covering for today, Team Coast will be coming up next, going up against a team called JV 